Hey everybody, Aaron Count, Sage Dynamics. Today we're going to talk about your rifle zero distance and how that can affect your shooting, uh, your point of aim, your point of impact. Drop it! Point. Now, your three most common zero distances are going to be your 25, 300, your 50, 200, and your 100 meter zero. Uh, there's some significant differences between the three, although the 50, 200, and the 100 are closer um, than those two compared to the 25, 300. I used the 25, 300 when I was in the military. As soon as I left the military, I stopped using it. I've been using the 50, 200 for about a decade now, um, and until recently, uh, it was my favorite zero. Uh, William Petty introduced me to the 100 meter zero. I believe Paul Howe teaches it and preaches it and says it's the greatest zero out there. Um, recently uh, decided to go ahead and take the plunge, put a 100 meter zero on my, my home defense gun, and I really, really like it. The difference between the zeros are kind of, uh, they speak for themselves, but not a lot of people can appreciate them uh, because they don't often get the chance to shoot out to the distances for which the rifle can be used. Um, with the 25-300, there is a lot of uh, differences in distances of where your point of aim, point of impact is going to be. Your 50-200 less, and the 100 meter zero, as I found and has been demonstrated by others, is even less distance or differences, point of aim, point of impact, on, across a wider degree of zeros. Uh, but in this video, we're just going to talk about close quarters and how your zero can affect your point of aim, point of impact in close quarters. From left to right, we have a head down products zeroed at 25-300 a PWS zeroed at 5200 and a Noveski Seekins zeroed at 100 meters. Now for this uh, this demonstration zeros I'm going to be using one of my three-dimensional threat targets. Uh, the orange bullseye is going to be my point of aim every time so wherever it moves on target that's where my actual point of aim is. The point of impact is going to be determined on the zero and my distance from the threat. Uh, just as a demo I'm going to shoot the three guns let you see the difference from point of aim point of impact at your common self-defense distances uh, and then I will introduce some context into the drill to show you why it might be uh, why it might behoove you to change your zero if you're using a zero that doesn't work as well in close quarters or across a wide degree of distances you might encounter uh, for self-defense. Now, for some context, what we're looking at is uh, your most likely to your least likely distance situation. So, again, 100,000 possible variables that go into any self-defense shooting. However, it's more likely to be closer to your threat than further away from your threat. Uh, even in law enforcement, engagement distances traditionally are closer than they are further away. I think the longest uh, police sniper shooting on record is still just over 400 meters, whereas the average is in the 50 meter range and most of them are closer than that. And that's sniper applications. Uh, for the average police officer shooting distances, much, much closer. For self-defense situations, especially in a profit crime situation where the threat physically has to approach you and speak to you to let you know that you're being robbed or being carjacked or what have you, uh, that distance is going to be pretty close. The rifle doesn't really factor into some of those situations. In a home defense situation, um, you're more likely to take a closer shot than a further shot based on the size of your home. If the shooting happens inside your home or an immediate area defense, and obviously based on your state laws, what you can and can't do. Uh, so I'm going to start this off at the 5 meters, and I'm going to work my way back and show you the point of aim, point of impact differences. Uh, first up will be a 25 meter 300 zero uh, on the head down product rifle. Now, close distances, if I can get the shot, I'm going to take the head shot. That's the only off switch in the body. I want that brain stem, that pons, that medulla oblongata, that midbrain. Uh, my point of aim would have been an ideal, the largest area of the, of the, uh, the brain stem. However, my point of impact was low. So if we're looking at bridge of the nose, my point of impact would have been just above the lip, the top lip, or maybe the end of the mouth. Is it still an off switch? Probably. Um, but I want the bullet to hit where I want it to hit. I want my round here. So I'd have to adjust my point of aim higher, perhaps an inch, to hit exactly where I wanted that round to go. Five meters, the 50, 200 meter zero gun. Now, uh, point of aim, point of impact, 
we're in the lower lip, the jaw area, when my point of aim is the, the, the largest part of the brainstem. Uh, that's kind of significant. Um, at five meters, this zero for a home defense situation may, depending on what, you, what you're looking for, may not be the best thing to do. If, you don't, uh, if you're not a fan of headshots, if it's not something you're looking for, if you don't think it's realistic for close ranges, then for a, a high thoracic hit, maybe this zero is going to work for you. But for close quarters, five meters for a headshot, you're definitely going to have to shift your point of aim to the crown of the head to get the area where you want the bullet to actually impact. Now the 100 meter zero. Now the 100 meter zero, basically the same as the 5200 at this distance. Again, if you're going to use a zero, have to be aware of that. Your desired point of impact is in the most likely area to induce an immediate incapacitation. A crown of the head would probably be your best point of aim to get the round where you want. All right, we're back at 10 meters. Go ahead and start things off with a 25, 300 meter zero gun. Now, as you can see, at 10 meters at the 25, 300 meter zero, there really is no appreciable difference, even precision accuracy difference, um, between point A and point impact. That's where I wanted to hit, that's where I hit. All right, 10 meters, the 5,200 meter zero gun. All right, unlike the 25, 300 meter zero, the 5,200 meter zero, we're dropping low. Still low a little bit. Um, not a significant issue. Obviously, that's like half an inch, closer to three-fourths of an inch. Not a significant issue, but uh, you can understand that there is going to be a point of aim, point of impact difference. Uh, 10 meters, the 100 meter zero. You see our 100 meter point aim, point impact, roughly the same. Um, I can't tell the difference. All right, now we're back at 15 meters, starting off again at the 25, 300 meter zero. Now based on distance, I switched my point of aim to the high thoracic cavity. Uh, heads, it's doable, especially with a shoulder fired weapon, but realistically, am I gonna go for a headshot from that distance? Only if I have to. Uh, so I switched to the chest, my, my center mass hit, my point of aim. Um, I know I pulled here, it's a little high, but it's still right in that area that I was actually aiming for. Because uh, the further away we get, the harder it is to aim really, really precise with non-magnified optics. Um, so the 25-300 at, at 15 meters, still pretty decent zero. Back at 15 again with our 50 200 meter zero. All right, from 15 meters, point of aim, point of impact, um, that's about right where I wanted it. Uh, as we get closer to the distances the rifles are zeroed for, we're going to see more accurate results when it comes to point of aim, point of impact. The rounds are going to be closer to where we want them to be. 15 meters, 100 meter zero. Now our 100 meter zero hit a little low. Uh, the obvious reason for that is, is we're still not getting closer back to uh, the actual zero distance. So at closer ranges, we are gonna have issues. The, the, the 25, 300 and the 50, uh, 200 are both zeroed closer to the threat than our 100 meter zero. It's still an acceptable drop as far as I'm concerned. I know if I really have to hit right here, exactly right there, uh, I just gotta aim up about a quarter to a half an inch. All right, now we're back at 25 meters, and starting off with the 25, 300 meter zero gun. From 25 meters standing, point of aim, point of impact. Uh, from back there, my 2MOA dot fills up a good portion of my point of aim. It's not in the black where I would want it. That would be more precision accuracy. Uh, from a distance that far, I would have probably taken a kneeling shot if it was available to me. But I'm still happy with the results, and that's the zero distance. So that's what we can expect from a 25, 300 meter zero gun. All right, 25 meters with the 50, 200 meter zero. All right, so our 50, 200 meter zero, still right where I wanted it, and a little right, 
I haven't used iron sights on that gun. I know it's an excuse. It is an explanation. Uh, battery died in the aim point, which is a good idea to keep iron sights on your guns. But it's still in the neighborhood practical accuracy of where I wanted that round to go. That's still a really solid heart hit if this was the threat and this is how he presented it to me and that was the, uh, the point of aim I had available. Now, the 100 meter zero gun from 25 meters. So my 100 meter zero, point of aim, point of impact, Again, it's not exactly where I want it for more precision accuracy, but for practical accuracy, it's still a really good hit. Even from 25 meters, 100 meters zero, it's a great zero. Now we've looked at the most likely to the least likely. We started with our close-in ranges, our home defense kind of situations with the rifle, um, or whatever variable, whatever self-defense situation you may find yourself in, and we moved it back to 25 meters. 25 meters is a great distance for a self-defense shooting. For law enforcement, a little more realistic. For military, definitely more realistic. Now, let's look at these zeros at greater distances, or even less likely situations for maybe a self-defense shooting, but maybe more likely for a law enforcement military application. All right, so now we're looking at a 50 meter shot. I'm gonna start off with a 25, 300 meter zero gun. Not that bad. Point of aim, point of impact on the little to the left. Uh, that could be the zero. Most likely it was just me. Uh, guns are pretty stable. I'm going to be using a mag pod on the magazine, so I can put it all the way on the deck, get that added stability. Uh, but from 50 meters, the 25, 300 meters zero gun is still putting around right about where I want it. All right, so from 50 meters, my 50 meter 200 gun, uh, point of aim, point of impact, exactly where I want it. That's exactly the distance it's zeroed for, your 5200. Uh, so this is what we should expect. All right, 50 meters on 100 meter zero. All right, obviously on the 100 meter gun, we're hitting a little low. Still a really good shot. I mean, we're dealing with practical accuracy at those distances. Precision accuracy, obviously, magnified optics would be preferable. You can still be precise with a non-magnified red dot holographic sight, uh, depending on what your definition of precision is. This is a very small target area, very small uh, point of aim. Even though my point of aim was here, my point of impact is here, it's still a really good hit when we look at reality and context. That's a really good high thoracic, in fact, it's a hard hit. Uh, so if the threat was presented to me in this way, the zero makes me very, very happy. All right, putting it in context, one example, a hostile situation. Uh, is it likely? It can happen. Uh, situation like this, be it a child that the bad guy is holding up, or an adult, a woman, someone who's slightly smaller than him, or maybe he's crouching down, you have very minimal exposure on your threat. The thoracic cavity is covered, you got a headshot available. Now, I've covered this before in my Know Your Limitations drill. It's a video you can check out, it's in the library. Um, but this is a worst case scenario where rifle zero definitely comes into play. Either you're going to have to consciously remember, or if you've trained it enough subconsciously, just adjust your point of aim, point of impact, hold off. Crown of the head, may put the round where you want it. You may not even take this shot. Um, realistically, if you have the ability, the best idea would be to maneuver, try to get a flank shot, try to get them to open themselves up. But if this is the only shot you have available to you, say it's in a bedroom door or a bathroom door or in a hallway or something like that, and uh, to protect life, you have to make that shot. This is what's available to you. This is where your rifle zero in a home defense situation or in a self-defense situation really comes into play. For law enforcement, definitely this situation could easily develop in a domestic dispute. Uh, grab the patrol rifle out of the car, go inside, try to deal with it. Uh, could it develop in a yard? Who knows? Um, there's 100,000 possible variables, 2 million possible variables. You can, you can really use any number you want uh, for the situation that can develop. But this is the shot, this is the shot we're looking at because I consider this to be the most realistic worst case scenario. Um, does it have to be a person? No, it can be cover or concealment. But we don't have the same emotional connection and the same, uh, I would say, and the same sense of urgency uh, with a threat behind cover and concealment than we do as a threat with a hostage. Uh, you might find yourself in a situation, uh, hopefully you never do, where you don't have an option. You have to make that shot to preserve life. So when it comes to rifle zero, something we're going to look at. Is our zero going to best suit us for what we 
most likely we'll need our rifle for. I don't know what distance I'm at. Uh, I'm going to shoot it's like between 10 and 7 yards, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, but again, self-defense situation, we don't always have those bright line distances, so we can't rely on the data we have in our head for those set distances. So I'm going to go ahead and take the shot and see if I can get it. And uh, this is the 25 meter, 300 meter zero gun. I got my hit. Uh, high crown of the head. Uh, may have glanced off the skull. Uh, again, so many possible variables that could have moved. Any, any number of situations. Um, it's not an optimal shot. I would have liked the shot actually to be a little lower. Obviously, that increases the danger to my hostage, but uh, defensive life situation, got to do what you got to do. Uh, I did consciously have to aim, had to hold over on this 25 gun because I knew there was going to be a serious point of aim, point of impact variance. So, my point of aim was actually the dot sat right on the top of the target, and that's my hit. All right, same distance, 50, 200 meter zero gun. More realistically, where I wanted it, it hits a little lower. Uh, I'm happy with it, but again, my point of aim, point of impact, severely different from that distance. I had to aim higher to get the bullet right where I wanted it. All right, 100 meter zero. meter we're gonna really get hit right here uh, because it's so close to zero so far I again I actually had to aim off the head completely to get my hit now I know that because I've been using the zero for a little bit uh, I'm more familiar with the 5200 I've been using that for like I said a, about a decade uh, got away from the 25 300 a long time ago um, I'm still feeling this zero out uh, when I was running this drill cold I hit the hostage because I'm still learning the zero the lesson there for me is know your zero and get a lot of experience with your zero at different distances at different levels of difficulty. This is obviously not a beginner's drill. Uh, I'm going to show my work. I just told you guys uh, I shot the hostage. Um, that's a humbling experience for me. Uh, even though I'm an instructor, I'm still a student. I still practice. I still have to maintain my own level of efficiency. I could have easily just swapped this target out for a fresh one. You guys would have never known the difference. But I wanted to show you that I can make mistakes too. Uh, I'm still relatively new to the zero, so I need to understand that there is going to be a variance, there is going to be a difference. Now hearing that, you may be automatically turned off to the 100 meter zero. Uh, don't do that. Don't use my experiences. Get out there if you want to. Put 100 meter zero on your gun if you're able and practice, 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 practice. No matter what your zero is, practice, 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 practice. What has this video shown us? There are no huge differences at closer ranges between the zeros when it comes to practical accuracy. High thoracic, whole head. When we get into precision accuracy, which I would definitely consider this to be a precision accuracy shot, things get a little more interesting, a little more difficult, and your knowledge of where your holdover will have to be if you're to change your point of aim, point of impact, is definitely more critical. Uh, the more urgent the situation, the harder it's going to be, so the more practice you have on the weapon, knowing your zero, the better off you're going to be. Um, I didn't want to make this video too long, so I didn't get into random distances, and I didn't get into the 100 and the 200 meters, which I'll do in a future video just to show you guys more differences and more how some things are the, still the same at greater distances on these three different zeros. Right, first off, I want to apologize for the wind noise on the camera. I actually made some pretty good sacrifices for you guys today. It's been windy all day. I've broken two lenses and the mic input for my road mic on top of the camera. So now I'm having to use the internal mic, which explains the excess of wind uh, on the uh, audio. Apologize. What have we learned? We looked at a lot of information. Uh, we looked at three different zeros and we looked at uh, how those zeros relate to close quarter shooting, our most likely situations working back to our least likely situations, depending on your occupation and or what your rifle's for. Self-defense, law enforcement, military, what have you. Um, I try to keep it as basic as simple as possible. I don't want to get into too much of the ballistics thing. Obviously, your zero ammo, ammo is going to affect things, um, but it should stay consistent across the zero. If you zero at 55 grand, you're going to get 55 grand performance all the way out to how far you shoot. Now, if you're, you zero on 55 and switch to a 69 or a 77, barrel twist, all these things will factor into that. So it's something you have to kind of experiment with your on your own, and I definitely encourage you to get on that Google uh, and find some credible sources, credible ballistic data, 
and look at these zeros and see which one's going to be best for you. As we saw, not a huge difference between them for some distances. Other distances, there was a considerable difference. Uh, so that's something to factor in. What are you most likely to need your rifle for? And then know where your point of aim, point of impact is going to be for situations where you're least likely uh, to have to shoot. I'm Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics. Train of It's a, it's a bullseye. This will probably be the only time you'll ever see me use one on a target, because uh, people don't come with these. It's for science, man.